when we released Multicam Studio, the way I was describing it to people is it's almost like an app within the app. It's an editor within an editor. I think Multicam is something you have to learn how to do the mapping, switch video only, switch audio only, and like the ability to slice up a Multicam container and move things around. Once you get used to those rules or those things, then you're good to go and you can do whatever you want with it. When I was editing full time, I would be like, I am really not happy that I'm going to be editing multicam today uh, because it, it just added another layer of complexity. At the time, I felt it was just the syncing and then when things go wrong, you really couldn't figure out what to do to make them go right. And everybody expected it to be four times as fast because, you know, it's just one, you know, you just got, you're just going to snap, 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 and it's going to be cut. Um, and it, it often didn't turn out that way. So today we want to talk about multicam. What is it? How can you make it your friend? And how can you actually get that done in LumaFusion? Absolutely, because once you know those hurdles that a multicam edit can provide for us editors, then we know how to tackle them and we know how to stop them from happening in the first place. And then I think it gets to the nice part of multicam editing where you actually really enjoy the process and you actually see how satisfying it is to work with multiple shots. Yeah, and we've got lots of features in there that help you get around common problems like mapping audio or cutting the video only or the audio only when you're switching. So there's a lot of um, tricks we're going to show you to make your life easier. So let's start off by talking about what is multicam editing. I think it's a concept that doesn't naturally arise to us when we start editing video. We're not usually working with multiple shots that have all been shot at the same time or we're not trying to sync clips straight away. So we're used to using the layers in, in LumaFusion. Obviously we can layer up to 12 different layers of video, but when you do try to sync different clips that are shot at the same time by using the layers on the timeline, this can get really complex. So multicam editing for anyone watching today that doesn't really understand it, it's essentially where you're editing a sequence or a scene where you're editing together different shots that have been shot at the same time. And there are little exceptions to this, so we can go into those. But generally, where we're working with media that's been shot at the same time, so perhaps a scene from different angles, a close-up, a wide shot, and so on. And we're going to sync those together so we can feel like we're in a broadcast gallery where we're literally picking camera A, camera B, camera C, and it's making our edit look a lot more exciting, I think, because we're going from different shot to different shot without necessarily having to cut, trim, and you know, delete clips on the timeline, everything is within one multicam container and it makes it a lot easier and a lot more fun to edit. You don't necessarily have to use it with up to six different cameras. You can use it with two different shots that have been shot at the same time. Uh, let's say, for example, an interview. So we see a lot of journalists use Multicam Studio and LumaFusion for editing interviews, news packages together, where, for example, you're covering a scene. You might have a wide shot of a marathon, for example, and you might have a close up and you might want to switch between those two different cameras. Or for example, we see a lot of um, LumaFusion editors make things like um, shot sequences. So rather than run around and get your, you know, your uh, person on screen to do the same action three different times where you're running around trying to grab different shots, you might set up three different cameras, again, from multiple angles, multiple different framing, trying to be creative with that. And then of course, you can just press record on each of them, sync those up, and there you have a shot sequence without actually having to do the manual work where you're shooting, running around and trying to get people to react for things. I have another example. This, this podcast recorded on Riverside. So we have my recording and Caroline's recording. And um, you take those and put them in multicam and then you can switch as well as cut out mistakes like when my dog barks or the doorbell rings or whatever. So we can do the switching and then cut out all the things we don't want and then have a quick way of making a podcast. And I've also seen Terry people use Multicam Studio with just one clip. So let's say they've got a wide shot, but they might have shot in 4K. 
they might put that same clip into Multicam Studio and just change the frame of it of the second clip. So it looks like they've got a close up on their subject at the front of the room, for example, and then a wide shot. And it's just a really nice way to be able to cut between those same clips. Yeah, you could put crazy effects on each angle too. Like if you were doing something really creative, right? You know, actually, when we think of a multicam edit, I think a lot of people think of these big productions, okay? It has to be, you know, a six camera setup of a huge event. No, it doesn't. It could be you in your front room um, trying to create an entertaining video for, let's say, your social media platform. It could be you talking to your classroom and trying to make what you're talking about seem a little bit more visually exciting. Can you think of anything else, Terry? Just syncing an audio, a good audio clip to a video clip. So maybe you have an extra microphone going to a Zoom recorder or some sort of recorder and that has your good audio, but your video has the camera audio. And that's that happens less often than it used to because everybody's using wireless mics now, but it still does happen that that's your workflow. And Multicam just makes it easy to say, this clip is synced to this audio and now it's a new clip and I treat it just like any other clip on the timeline. So that's another example. So Terry, Let's dive into the synchronizer, shall we? So the first steps of having to actually use a multicam container is going into that synchronizer. Right, so once you get into the synchronizer, you'll see drop zones on the left side. You just drop your different camera angles into the one, two, three, four, five, six zones. At the top, you'll see a primary audio track, something that is audio only and it is the best audio for the entire switched and then at the bottom you'll see a place to synchronize and you can choose whether you synchronize by auto it will look at your media and find what it can and decide what to do or you can choose specifically you want to synchronize by waveform audio waveform or you can do by time code once you press that button you'll see it you'll see the clips move around and if you look at the waveforms you'll likely be able to see that they're in sync if they're not in sync for some reason there's some things that you can do one option down there is manual and that lets once you're in manual mode you can pick up any clip and move it manually so that it's perfectly in sync I think it's also useful here, Terry, to look at the audio mapping. And audio mapping is such a great feature within Multicam because it allows you to essentially choose which drop zone is going to host the audio for each clip. Let's think about it like as if I had a separate audio recording because then I can, it's easier to visualize. One is an audio clip, one is a video clip, but it could, they could both be video, but let's say they're, one's audio. You can tell the video clip that every time I cut to that video clip, I want to hear the synced audio from the other drop zones. So when you do map audio from one track to another, each angle is color coded. So you can see that you've mapped angle three, for instance, to angle one. And it makes your edit so beautiful because you can easily see which video is going to play, which audio is going to play. We're going to go back to the timeline and we're going to tap on our clip, make sure our Multicam container is selected there and tap on Switcher. Now this is the fun part. We can play our clip through and just tap onto the different clips where we want to be on screen. And we can see that in the preview. So as we're playing our clip through, we can actually listen to it and switch live as it were so as we're playing it through or we can just press pause and we can manually do this i like to do this as well terry like for example if i'm editing this podcast for example i'll probably switch as we're talking just because i'm looking at our as both um, our reactions i'm switching to what i want to see uh, as well as as here but also uh, sometimes i might just make a mistake and i think actually no it's going too fast i need to be more precise with this and I can press pause and I can do it manually, which is quite nice as well. So flicking between those two options. And I think here is a great point to talk about creating J and L cuts within the switcher, Terry. And I use this all the time, especially during this podcast. We get a lot of LumaFusion editors who want to switch between two different cameras or more, but actually they find, oh, why is my audio 
changing at the same time as my, my video, which is kind of the most obvious thing to do. But when you're working with an audio clip, like a conversation as we're having now, sometimes you might want to see the expression of the other person, but still hear the audio from, you know, camera one, for example. So in this, in this example here, I would press that little audio icon on the left hand side and I would say, OK, in this respect, I don't want to switch the audio between these two cameras. So I'm going to tap on that and you can see a line goes through it. And now I'm just switching the video and I can do the opposite and just tap the video and not the audio. And I can also now switch just the um, the audio. So this is creating those J and L cuts where you hear the audio before the video and the video before the audio but within the multicam container. So you don't have to take your clips out of the multicam container to create anything like that, which makes it great for those reaction shots. And of course, where you've got multiple things happening at the same time. So when you're in the switcher and you've done your switching and you realize, I, I really don't like where I switched that one, what do I do? Well, it's really easy. Um, one thing you can do is just tap on the cut and drag it left or right. And then the other thing you can do is re-switch a section. So you just start playing back from a certain point and if you're on angle two for instance it's going to overwrite everything going forward with angle two until you, until you stop it. So you can actually re-switch a section just by going into play and switching once you have actually switched and you're going back to the timeline, you can see all of those cut marks of where you've actually cut between your different shots on the timeline itself. And then your entire multicam container will be acting almost as one clip, which you can drag and pick up and move around your timeline. And then you can add on anything like your titles, any extra layers, um, your audio and so on. So it's almost like Terry, this is when we released Multicam Studio, the way I was describing it to people is it's almost like an app within the app. It's an editor within an editor, right? So once you kind of get to grips with syncing and switching, and then you're almost going back to a normal timeline. And I think that makes it a lot more familiar. And you can always go back into the synchronizer or switcher whenever you want uh, while you're editing, which makes it quite nice. It's like It's not like everything is in one order that you have to do. You can just jump back, change, make corrections, are there any situations, Terry, you feel that people might want to jump back into the synchronizer or back into the switcher? Yeah, so the workflow would be that you do all of your switching for the entire multicam, then go back into the um, synchronizer and do your color correction, do your reframing, do any kind of effects that you want to put on the entire clip, the source clip. Say you want to color correct me, go in and make my clip black and white so that I'm black and white throughout the whole by just going into the synchronizer and changing me to black and white. Now I'm always going to be black and white when I switch, when you switch to me. But you can also color correct scene by scene after the switching. So you go to the timeline, tap once on the container, and then tap once on the actual clip you want to color correct. So now you can go into one of my black and white clips and maybe put a wash on it, maybe make me purple or something. So we can see one in the synchronizer does the entire clip on the timeline does just the, this, the section that you've switched to. So that's one of the reasons you might want to go. You can also do reframing. Um, you could adjust audio levels. There's all sorts of stuff you can do in this in the synchronizer that are going to apply to your entire um, multicam container on the timeline. There's a lots of ways that we can really utilize the multicam container, not just within itself, but also within the wider edit on the timeline. And I think at this point, Terry, it's quite nice to think about how a multicam container will react with other clips within our edit, because a lot of the time we're going to be wanting to use a multicam container and then cut to, you know, an unusual sequence, you know, maybe even just one layer on the main track. And then we might want our multicam container again. And every time you trim a clip within a multicam container, that's automatically going to make yourself another container. 
one way to think about the reason this does that is say you did detach some audio and it's running in sync under several clips. If you were to trim the middle clip in there and we didn't make a new container warning you that you've gone out of sync, that, that lower layer of audio that has been detached would no longer be in sync without you cutting that as well. So it's, it, you can think of it almost as a, as a helpful warning that, oh, this is, you're, you've forgotten that this is multicam, you know, or you can use it to your benefit. Like, I want to do a little bit of multicam. I want to split it here, go to another video, and then, and then come back to multicam after. Absolutely. I usually end up with a timeline with 40 multicam containers, Terry. You know, even if I'm doing a discussion between two different people, because you're cutting out sections, you know, there's loads of areas where I might want to rearrange the conversation. You know, if I go back to a certain point and I want to move things around, again, that's going to be a different multicam container, but using the same synced clips. OK, so it's almost like you've synced the footage You've switched all the footage together and then you can rearrange your timeline, which I think is the fun part, because then you can actually start making and really crafting your edit and crafting your story, how you want it to play out, all while knowing your audio, your visuals are exactly how you want them. And then these multicam containers can be moved around as you would any other clip. You're just tapping on them, making sure the entire thing is highlighted. So not so that you've got an individual clip, but you've got the entire multicam container, really important obviously making sure that you're in the right edit mode, insert or overwrite so that you can move those around. So the timeline behaves is exactly how you expect it. And you can start layering and start making your, your multicam edit exactly how you want it. Yes. I mean, I, I think multicam is something that you have to learn how to do, even though I think we've made our multicam as simple as it should be like multicam yeah multicam can't be too you know if you if you made it just all it would do is sync and switch and it didn't have any other features you would quickly get into a situation where you wanted something that wouldn't be able to be done so we've added in some extra features here like the mapping like the the um switch video only switch audio only um and like the b ability to uh, slice up a multicam container and move things around. Once you get used to those rules or those things, then you're good to go and you can do whatever you want with it. Exactly. I always find the best way to learn anything, obviously, is to start off really slowly. And you'll soon realize like, oh, actually, it's quite simple, but it's just kind of getting those multicam muscles exercised. Yes, yeah. I think it is one of the most powerful features in LumaFusion, this multicam studio. And um, I hope that people really dig in and enjoy using it. Absolutely. And if any of you guys watching have any questions on how to use it, or if you'd like us to expand on any of these areas in any future videos, please let us know in the comments. We're going to read each one of them. And yeah, let us know what you do with it.